Hello, my name is Alessio Bernardelli and I work at Crosicalio School in Cambran. I'm here today to show you triggers in PowerPoint and how I use them to get my pupils to create multimedia quick tips callouts. I will show you how you can create quick tips to describe the different rooms in, in a medieval castle, but you can apply this technique with any other subject. In fact, I would show this video to my pupils to see if they can transfer these skills to my subject, which is physics. I have already made some preparations for the activity because I want to focus on how to use triggers. So on the slide I've inserted the image of a medieval castle on the background, a call out and a text box, the image of a cauldron and this shape here that we'll use as a close button later on and this invisible button here. To make the button invisible simply change the transparency to 100 in the shape fill color. Excellent! Everything is in place now. Stay with me because in the next part you learn the power of triggers. So what do we really want to achieve here? Well, I want my callout to appear on the screen when I click on this invisible button. And I want it to disappear when I click on this button on the callout. You might be thinking, oh my goodness, that's impossible. You probably need pages of programming code to do that. That's it, I'm off. Hey, wait a minute. With triggers you can do quite amazing things without writing a word of code. Let me show you. First of all, select everything you've created apart from the invisible button. So uh, hold the control button and click on all the other objects that you've made. Then open the custom animation on the animation ribbon. And now click on the add effect button and select the entrance dissolve in. So far, this is a normal animation, but we want it to start at the click of our invisible button, which is the rectangle here. But how do you know which rectangle it is when you have many objects on the slide? This is a very valid question. So click on the invisible button and select format on the ribbon. Now open the selection pane window. The highlighted rectangle is our trigger. Now back to the animation window, select all the animations that you have created and click on the arrow here and then on the timing option. Click on the trigger button, tick start effect on click of and then scroll down to find our rectangle. Let's check our progress so far. In the custom animation window click on the slideshow button. If we click on our invisible button the callout appears just what we wanted. Let's now make the callout disappear. Select the callout and all its objects including the close button. Then add the dissolve out exit and now trigger these effects on the click of the close button which is the flowchart here. Let's see what our callout looks like now. Click on the button to make it appear and on the close button to make it disappear. That was pretty easy but in the next session I will show you tr some tricks to speed up things even further. In this section we we'll create another quick tip. I can hear you saying are you crazy? Do I have to do all that again? It's going to take me ages. Don't panic. I know you are either lazy or push with time. I am both so I'll show you a way to cut corners and save some time. Select the invisible and close button, the call out and the text box. Now right click on the images you've selected and click on copy. Then on the slide right click again and click paste. Then move everything on the side a bit just to distinguish the two call outs. If we view the slideshow now we see two buttons that work in exactly the same way. This one and this one. All you need to do now is to resize and move the call out where you want it, change the color and add whatever you want to it. Simple, isn't it? And this is our final product. As you can see, I've uh, created two more call outs. One with a sound. A large one room structure with a loft ceiling and one with a video. So with triggers you can create multimedia quick tips but much more and keep watching because I'm going to show you some other things that you can do with uh, triggers in PowerPoint if you let your imagination loose. Here are some examples to get you excited. This is a spelling game for my son Matteo to help him understand 
how to spell his name. With triggers, you can also create drop down menus and quite amazing interactive games for your classes, like this one. <coughs> now you know the secret of triggers. I have passed on this ancient wisdom to you as it was passed to me. In fact, you don't even need PowerPoint 2007 to use triggers. This secret is as old as Office 2003. Use it wisely, my young Padawan.